What's up, YTPC? Uncle Willie coming to you from the Mobile Lounge. Hope everyone's had a good week. Friday, finally. I know. Hmm. Ah. I know I had one in here. I need to smash the ash. <clears throat> so, Friday. Smoking my Friday Savinelli. <clears throat> Although it's not a branded matches 860. It's still a Roma Lucite 673. Since I was smoking a well-renowned pipe, I figured I would smoke some well-renowned tobacco. The Amazing River Plug. Of course, I can't leave well enough alone. So I looked up reviews on River Plug. And it's funny how they change periodically. So instead of just reading the reviews that are relevant to the blend, I clicked on newest. There was three reviews from 2022. So I read those. One guy said he had he smoked a well-stored plug of rubber plug. It was an opened pouch that he had put in a baggie and let it sit for five years. Well, you see where this is going. He said it was dry and crumbly. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Two words mason jar you can't keep a tobacco in a baggie maybe for a month or so while you're smoking a sample or something like that baggies aren't airtight the reason baggies aren't airtight is because they originally they were sandwich bags and you put a sandwich in it and the bag is able to breathe to keep everything fresh. Same way with cigars. The cellophane on a cigar is breathable. If you leave it in a baggie for five years, you deserve to have it dried out into a crisp. He said it broke up in splinters. Be surprised if it didn't. history of it, it actually started out for, with a company called Scottish Cooperative Wholesale Society, SCWS. Then it was sold or it went under the name CWS, just Cooperative Wholesale Society. It don't say the years that this was taking place. Then it was bought by the Japanese, MK. And from what I understand, they were making the tobacco out of the UK. 
and I think it was 2000 they closed their doors. So it was out of production for a short period of time before somebody else took over on it. But Garth and Hogarth, from what I read and what I understand, and it's just not the gospel, I think in 2016 is when GNH started. Because in 2014, there was an interview with Chris Galwith, and he said that Galwith and Hogarth had, was not making and has never made rubber plug. But that was in 14. Now in 16, it shows on the, the when you look at the, the tobacco blend manufacturer, all that, it says Galwith and Hogarth. Doesn't say when they started. But what I read is they started in 2016. It's funny because on the pouch, it still says Scandinavian Tobacco Group. And it also says GNH, Gawith and Hogarth, TTC, Tobacco Trading Company. Nowhere on the pouch does it say manufactured by Gawith and Hogarth. So I'm not going to argue the, the fact where it's made. I can just tell you where it's smoked. And that's in an undisclosed location in Maryland. <laughs> Jim Inks. He does a lot of tobacco reviews. Oh, St. David's Pipes, he did a, a little review on Jim Inks, or a commentary, not really review, last week, week before, and if you look on tobacco reviews and you pull up almost any tobacco you want to look at, there's going to be a review by Jim Inks. Jim Inks was a... I don't remember now, but he was a uh, Marvel Comics illustrator, I believe it was. And if you see his review, his profile picture is a picture of Edward G. Robinson. Just like the Edward G. Robinson pipe tobacco. Dave told a story about that. I think it originated in Dempsey Tobacco. Or Kramer's. Kramer's, I'm sorry. It went out of production and Jim signed petitions and pushed and pushed. Finally, years later, the Edward G. Robinson went back in production. And it was thanks to uh, Jim Inks. I forget what his real name is. It's James Amash. A-M-A-S-H. James Amish um, Amash. His review for Rubber Plug starts out saying that it has a light, floral, Lakeland essence to it. So there's where the debate starts. <laughs> Y'all notice I stir the pot every so often with that uh, Lakeland debate. So if it started out in the Scottish <laughs> Cooperative Wholesale Society, were they using Lakeland? Because I sure thought Lakeland came from the GNH and the Sam Galwith run from Cumbria in the Lakeland district. Smooth, smoky, no tongue bite, little sweetness, yes, a little uh, smokiness. They say that there's a little Kentucky in there, some fire cured. I think there's just a little bit, not much. Mainly Virginia's is the component that says 
Virginia Burley, and for flavoring, it just says other slash miscellaneous. I know that it has tonka bean in it. I can smell it, I can taste it. As far as the floralness, I don't get it. He said, it, I don't know if it was him or someone else on the reviews. They said that it's not an all day smoke. I hate when I see that review or hear that review that unless somebody says, in my opinion, it's not an all day smoke. If they just say it's not an all-day smoke, they don't know what you smoke or how you smoke. I know a guy in a group that he'll smoke bowls of Rustica, HH Rustica, back-to-back. -back. That's some strong tobacco. So if he smokes that back-to-back -back and he'll smoke it in the morning for breakfast, it could be an all-day smoke to him. If Rustica is telling me he can smoke anything all day. The same way with anybody. It depends on your your taste buds and your tolerance of the nicotine and the strength of the tobacco and whatever. <clears throat> I hate when, I, like I said, I hate when I see or hear it's not an all-day smoke. Because for some people it could be. I could smoke it all day. If I had enough of it, that would be the only reason that I would say this is not an all day smoke because it's not readily available in the U.S. market anyway. I was on a website last night again for uh, in the U.K. They got it. And I don't know if it's lira or pounds. It's like the little the L with the slash in it thing. I don't know what that is, but I'm just going to call it pounds. It was uh, $14 or $17.94 for one pouch and $74.94 for five pouches. So I emailed them and said, do y'all ship to the U.S.? They answered me today and said no. So if you know somebody in the U.K., and they're willing to do it for you. You can you can get them to buy it and ship it over to you. You'll be taking a chance that Customs gets it or whatever and all that crazy crap. But it can happen. I had some shipped to me from the UK. That's where I got mine. So when I did some errands earlier, went to the mailbox, went to the post office, sent a package off for my wife, dropped off a package at UPS for my wife for returns, and went by the gun shop. There's a new new gun in there that I want. I took I took one in to see if they would trade with me, and they would they would only give me right at what that other gun is worth and I, I wanted more than what they wanted to give me because I know what I have my gun could bring a thousand bucks if I knew somebody that wanted it a collector of revolvers like that but with not having a somebody that wants or looking for one they wanted a couple hundred Wanted to give me a couple hundred less than that, so I I just took it. I took my gun, came home. Going over to my daughter's later, see my grandchildren. Well, I see my daughter also, son-in-law. My son-in-law, I call him Dog. 
We'll probably, uh, I'm going to take a couple for drones over there. We haven't smoked together in a while. So I'm going to take a couple cigars over there and we'll, we'll sit in his garage after we visit with the grandkids for a little bit. And love on them and, and everything. And then I'll go out with, with dog, have a cigar. So I hope everyone has a good weekend. Hope your Friday ends, ends in a good note. And remember, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And with that being said, until next time, you know what to do. Stop them and puff them.